Hi guys. So another assumption that I hear a lot of um, election predictors make is that Wisconsin is supposedly the most uh, conservative state in the entire Rust Belt um, out of these four states, at least um, these four swing states. Now, on a, on a surface level, that would seem seem to be correct because you know the 2020 election it was the closest um, state um, in the Rust Belt. It was the one that voted for Biden the least. And then also in 2016, it was also the deepest Trump state. It voted uh, for Trump by 0.76, uh, which is more than Pennsylvania, Michigan, Minnesota did. And then also in 2004, it was also in the closest. It voted for Kerry the least. And then in 2000 as well, it also voted for Gore the least. Um... Now, the thing is, this actually isn't true, because if you look at the Obama years, if you look at 2008, Pennsylvania voted for Obama by 10 points, Wisconsin voted for Obama by 14, and it's not just 2008, also 2012, Pennsylvania voted for, was Obama plus 5, Wisconsin was Obama plus 7. So, not exactly something the most conservative state in the Rust Belt would do, um, you know, just factually speaking. So, so what what do I think is um, the the uh, if Wisconsin is not really the most conservative state in the Rust Belt, what do I think is the correct alternate explanation? I think it's more that the two states are roughly. They have they share like a same baseline probably probably like the same, um, but then Wisconsin has a lot more elastic voters like populist voters you know these are people who these they will respond to populism whichever side um, you know it puts up the populist they'll vote for so that would explain why in the Obama years in 2008 2012 you know Obama was the uh, the huge the huge populist. Um, and so he was able to galvanize the Wisconsin voters a lot more than Pennsylvania voters. Um, but then all, all that changed in 2016 um, when Trump and the Republicans suddenly became the populists. And then all of a sudden Wisconsin's voting to the right of Pennsylvania. And then also in 2020. And then in the 2000 and 2004, neither side really was that populist. But I guess... Uh, I guess Bush did have a slight bit of a populist element. Maybe that's why Wisconsin. I mean, he did run on a sort of like an anti-war and, and a platform, and I guess it was somewhat populist too. But I, I wasn't. I was too young during the Bush presidency to really know. Um, and then also you could explain in two thousand four. You know, Kerry was a lot more populist than than uh, uh, what's his name Gore. Um, although neither of them were super populist, but I mean, Gore was, I mean, Kerry was miles more populist than Gore. So maybe that explains why Wisconsin trended left, two points to the left. It stayed roughly the same, even though the whole nation moved right to two points. It became a, this is the only time Republicans won the popular vote. And Wisconsin still, Wisconsin only got more Democrat. See? Pennsylvania can't say the same thing. Pennsylvania was D plus four in 2000, and it moved with the national environment. It moved um, two points to the right um, in 2004. So was so like yeah. I guess you know this all shows my point is it's really Wisconsin is not the most conservative state. It's the most populous state. And, you know, I first got this idea because I know, you know, long ago, you know, Wisconsin even voted for a socialist once. They voted for, I don't know, what was, what was his name? It was, it was like in the Progressive Party. And, like, you know, I watched a documentary how about how, like, Wisconsin, you know, just it's always just been a populist state. You know, it's always been a place for experiments, for all that sort of thing. And that also probably explains why they were jumping onto the Trump bandwagon a lot more than Pennsylvanians because... You know, they were ready to try something new, They're eager to try something new, itching to try something new a lot more. <laughs> um, and I know that's kind of word salad, but <clears throat> yeah. So, 
what do I think? Um, so therefore, I think, you know, predictions where, like, if it's Trump, absolutely, I think Wisconsin will vote to the right of Pennsylvania. But if it's like, you know, I see some predictions of some people saying, I don't know, what if Mike Pence ran or Mickey Haley or some other, like, you know, neocon, Romneyite, you know, you know, traditional Republican who's, like, not populist at all. And then they'd say, they think, like, I mean, yeah, sure, I agree that they'd flip Arizona and Georgia easily. I mean, these are traditional, they look, they, just because he's not Trump. Um, and because these are pretty traditional, friendly to traditional Republicans a lot more. Um, but then they say, like, they think Pennsylvania would stay blue and Wisconsin might be red just because of bias of popularity. I'm like, no, no, that's that. I'm tired of hearing predictions that seeing predictions that say that. Um, instead, I mean, I think without the populism, I'd, just, I'd be surprised if the Republican could win any of these Rust Belt states. Um, like, you know, even honestly, like, but, but anyway. If, if there's a state that Republicans, like a non-populist Republican, like has any shot at flipping, I think it would actually be Pennsylvania. Because, you know, um, as an example, for example, you know, because, yeah, they, they, they aren't, they don't respond to populism. It's not as important to them as much as Wisconsin is. Um, but even so, I still don't think they even have a shot at Pennsylvania, but I think um if if it, if it were say like bernie if it were bernie sanders like running for the democrat nomin the, the democrat position um and and in the general election um or just another like hugely populist person then i actually see i think wisconsin would actually be to the left of pennsylvania so i think like you know in 2020 for example uh I think I actually my prediction for 2020 if it were Bernie Sanders instead of Hillary Clinton is I actually would do this I would have I actually would have Wisconsin and staying blue and Michigan staying blue but Pennsylvania maybe being red because Bernie Sanders also like Bernie Sanders won the uh, Democratic primary against Hillary Clinton in in with Minnesota Wisconsin and Michigan. He did not win it against Hillary Clinton in Pennsylvania. He actually lost it. So, um, yeah, it's another point that shows, you know, Wisconsin is way more populous than Pennsylvania. It's not more conservative. So, um, so yeah, and I think, I, as, I also think then, like, if you have, say, DeSantis or DeSantis or or Yunkin running for the Republican Party nomination. I mean, for in the general election, um, I think you might start to see a map like this too. But more likely, like yeah, I think you know DeSantis. He isn't near. He isn't nearly as much of a populist as Trump is. But he is a little bit, but not very much. And he's and he's lost the outsider appeal too because he's just a politician. Um. <clears throat> You know, I think, I think, yeah, you could have you could have a map like this, or you could have a map where Wisconsin is lean and then Pennsylvania is tilt, or where Wisconsin is tilt blue and Pennsylvania is tilt red, or something like that. But and then with Yunkin, for example, you know he's, you know he's he's socially conservative um, to an extent. He's, um. And he's like he's like a perfect he's the perfect candidate for the suburb for like a suburban state. Um, don't get me wrong, but but he really isn't much of a populist. He really isn't a populist. He's and he's you know I feel like Yunkin people who want Yunkin to run for the for the for the general election. I, I, Yunkin's electability is just on a national stage is just way overrated because people. I mean. Yeah, he was a great candidate for Virginia, um, but he was, but that's like a state level. That's way different than the national level. What people really miss is that he's very anti-union, and like, is that really going to help him in places like the Rust Belt, where where you need the working class union vote? 
It's like how how far is is how is he going to appeal to people in Wisconsin when he when he when he's saying things like, uh, oh, um, like you, you shouldn't be forced to join a union. I want and I want to keep right to work laws. Like, like no, <laughs> they're not going to respond well to that. This is like no, no. I I so if it were like was if it were like Yunkin versus Biden in twenty twenty four. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think, I think Youngkin would easily flip back Arizona and Georgia. I think he's a perfect candidate for both of those states, you know. Um, but, but I, I actually wouldn't be surprised if he lost the entire Rust Belt and this, and probably, you know, that would be that would be the election. Well, may, maybe Youngkin could crack New Hampshire. Who knows? That's still not enough. Or maybe, maybe Nevada. That would be two sixty nine. Oh no, that that would be enough. Maybe he, Youngkin would probably, yeah, he'd have to win Georgia. He'd have to do take Nevada and New Hampshire instead, and just give up on the Rust Belt. So I don't think I I wouldn't be surprised if he just lost the entire Rust Belt because he's not a populist. But if he did win, manage to crack a state in the Rust Belt, um, I think it would actually be Pennsylvania too, because also from a geographical advantage, you know, Pennsylvania is close to Virginia. Um, Wisconsin, not at all near there. Like, what appeal does he have in Wisconsin? <clears throat> and also, and also because you know Youngkin's a perfect suburban candidate. Pennsylvania's got a lot of uh, a lot more suburbs than Wisconsin does. You know, Wisconsin only has only has Milwaukee. That's its only major city. Pennsylvania is too. Pennsylvania has um, Pittsburgh and uh, what's it? Philadelphia. So it's got twice the amount of suburbs or so, somewhere like that. So I think, yeah, if it, if it were Youngkin on the national stage, he should focus his efforts on Pennsylvania and just give up on Wisconsin and Michigan and Minnesota especially. Um, and if it were DeSantis, um, you know, probably the same thing. You know, Pennsylvania is a lot more geographical um, closer to Florida, but it's still, he doesn't have much of a geographical advantage in that case. He's just got Sunbelt appeal, which would help in Arizona and Georgia. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's my, that's my take. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pretty tired of people putting, you know, having Wisconsin being the state that puts Republicans over the top that aren't populist, you know, that's just not going to happen. And if Nikki, if, if there's a neocon, I don't see them winning any of the Rust Belt states. In fact, I think, honestly, if it's like Nikki Haley, they might even lose Ohio and Iowa. Because, like, even 10 years ago, they, they like they lost Ohio and Iowa because they have they just don't have appeal to the workers in those states. These, these people aren't conservatives. They are populists. So you really do need to run populists on the national stage. You don't need, we like, done, we're done with, <laughs> I'm just done, like... <laughs> If, if you still think Nikki Haley's and Bush's and uh, Mike Pence's are viable options, because they're just no, they're gonna they're gonna, they're losers, and they don't have any shot. So, yeah. Thanks for watching and um, like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all later.